Mr. M presents Adding Integers with Counters. Hi everyone. In this video we're going to look at one of the ways that uh, my students and I look at adding integers when we're first learning to do it. We use an actual physical model in the shape of counters. So we have uh, positive and negative counters. Positive usually represented uh, with a red counter and negative usually represented with a blue. Uh, when my students are drawing them in their book, they usually don't draw them out, so they'll draw a red counter a circle with a little plus inside and a negative counter a circle with a little minus sign inside. Just a little easier to draw. So we use the counters in this way. So if I have one, two, three red counters, then that would probably mean that I'd have positive three. If I had one, sorry, one, two, three, four blue counters, that would mean I had negative four. That's how we use them. To understand how the counters work, we have to be comfortable with the zero principle. The zero principle basically states that if I have one positive number and one negative number that are exact opposites from each other, meaning they are the same number but one is positive, one is negative, or you could say they are equal distances from zero but one is on the positive side and one is negative side, and you put those two numbers together, you add them together, you're always going to get zero. That means whenever I pair a red counter and a blue counter, they're always going to come out to be zero. It's like saying plus one, positive one, plus negative one. If you do that actual math, it's always going to equal zero. That's going to be important uh, as we look at how to use them to add. So let's start with an easy one. Positive three plus positive four. Sometimes the integers throw us off, but essentially this is literally three plus four. The same math problem you've probably been doing since grade one or two. How do we show it with counters? Well, we say positive one, two, three counters. Put my little plus sign in there. Plus one, two, three, four more positive counters. Because there's no negative counters involved, I can literally just count them all up, and that equals positive seven. Why? Because there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven positive counters. Easy, right? The addition becomes a little trickier when I start adding positive and negative integers together. So the first thing I want to do is always just place my counters as I would. So I have three positives plus three. There they are. And five negative counters. Now I like to say to my students that the counters, positive and negative numbers, are like apples and oranges. I can add them together, but when I'm looking at my physical model, I can't actually add red counters plus blue counters. It's like adding two completely different things. So what I need to do is I need to uh, make pairs with them that will equal zero. So follow what I'm doing here. So here I have one red counter and one blue counter. Together, we know that that equals zero. I have a second red and a second blue counter. That also equals zero. I have a third red and blue counter. Those also equal zero. So those basically have now crossed out. They equal zero. What am I left with? Two blue counters. There's nothing to pair those off with, so we know that my answer is going to be negative 2, because that's what I have left over. When you look at the numbers, positive 3 plus a negative of 5, it does make sense numerically as well. Okay, now I've shown you with these Vs, but you don't always have to show that. You can simply cross out uh, pairs um, once you get comfortable with this idea, and then you'll just use the ones that you have left over. We'll take a look with one at the other direction. So I have negative two counters, one, two, plus positive six counters. And what can I do? I can simply cross them out in pairs. One red, one blue, one blue, one red. What am I left with? I'm left with four positive counters, which means my answer is going to be positive 4, because that's how much I have left over. Final combination I can get is I could get adding two groups of negative counters. And 
And like adding the two groups of positive counters, there's no pairing off. I can't pair any red and blue counters to equal zero, so I'm just going to literally count. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight negative counters, so it's going to equal negative eight. That's going to be my final answer there. There you go. Just that easy. A lot of my students really like using the counters. It's one of their preferred methods when they're first learning, and you can see why. Once you get comfortable with it, they're really easy to use, as long as you remember the zero principle and when to use it.